Please go to elithecomputerguy.com in order to view schematics, code, and more for the projects that you are learning about. Welcome back. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to install Ubuntu Server into VirtualBox. So I have VirtualBox installed on my MacBook Pro, the system that I use for my demonstrations here. Now, please remember that with VirtualBox, you can install this onto Mac, you can install this onto Windows, or you can install this onto Linux. So if you're using a different operating system, more or less, the entire process should be pretty much identical. There may be a couple of tweaks in there. Just keep that in mind if you're going to be using Windows. So what we're going to do is we're going to install uh, Ubuntu Server into an instance on VirtualBox and then once that instance has been created with Ubuntu Server then we can interact with that Ubuntu Server installation as if it's a full-fledged computer because it really is it's a full-fledged virtual server now that, that is now sitting on your desktop or laptop PC now if you're going to be using VirtualBox it is important to remember that you do need enough uh, system resources to be able to run a uh, virtualization uh, at least pretty decently. I'm using a pretty old uh, MacBook Pro uh, system as my demo system here. It's a 2013, but it does have 16 gigs of RAM and it does have a PCI Express solid state drive. So I would recommend if you're going to be using VirtualBox uh, in order to, to, to do these uh, projects and experiments uh, that you should have at least, I would argue, you should have 16 gigs of RAM. You can probably get away with 8 gigs of RAM if really necessary, but you should also have a solid state drive because do remember, when you boot up an instance of a virtual machine, then the hardware of your system is going to be used both for the host computer, so whatever your main computer is, and for that virtual machine. So you can run into some problems where if you start using a whole bunch of resources that you don't normally use, uh, the host machine may slow down or you may get some bugs, you may run into some quirks, that type of thing. So just kind of keep this in mind. I would really argue if you're gonna be doing uh, things with a virtual box and such, you really should have 16 gigs of RAM but you know eight gigs eight gigs should be enough um, and I'll talk about that a little bit more uh, when I actually show you how to do this so let's go over to the computer and I'll show you how to install uh, Ubuntu server into an instance of VirtualBox onto your computer so the first thing that we need to do is we need to go to ubuntu.com so we simply go to ubuntu.com and then we are going to click on the download link once we've clicked on the download link, we see we have a number of options here. We have Ubuntu Desktop is what we are not doing today. We are going to be doing Ubuntu Server. But before we download Ubuntu Server, one of the things that we need to look for is what are the system requirements for this operating system that, we'll, that we will be installing uh, within VirtualBox. Because if we don't give uh, the operating system that we'll be installing within VirtualBox enough system resources, then it may crash or there may be some major problems. So for this, unfortunately, it's not really easy to find uh, where the, the requirements are. Oops. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go down here and we see these installation guides. So we're going to go to Ubuntu server because we're going to be doing Ubuntu server. We click on Ubuntu server and then over here we can look for requirements. And then here, what it says, you will need to consider the following before starting the installation. Ensure you have at least two gigs of free storage space. So not RAM, that's just free storage space. Access to DVD or USB, blah, blah, blah. But that doesn't really give us a lot of information. That doesn't tell us how much RAM or any of the other things that we need. So if you go down here and you click on see the server guide pages, you can then go down and this actually gives you the minimum requirements uh, for the server operating system. So standard or minimal. Uh, Debian's installer, that's what we're going to be doing. There's something called a live server. We're not gonna be messing with that today. Uh, and so then we can see what are the requirements for this. So for a server standard installation, it is a one gigahertz uh, processor, that's no big deal. 512 megs of RAM, uh, so that's easy. Uh, and then 1.5 gig uh, hard drive space for the base system. But curiously enough, it then says all tasks installed 2.5 gigs. So before it said you only needed two gigs of space. Uh, and so this is why it's good to really tr just try to drill down and figure out what the exact requirements are. So for this day, today, what I'll be doing is I will give the server uh, a gig of RAM just to make life easier for me. And I'll probably use the default uh, that VirtualBox offers uh, for creating a hard drive and just do 10 gigs of space just for, for, 
to make life easier. So those are there. Uh, again, we can go down here, we can look at server minimal installation, something to think about. Again, if you're gonna be looking at creating a server that, that's very, very, very task specific, let's say you are literally just creating a DHCP server or literally just creating a DNS server. Uh, well, if you see, you see the requirements uh, for server minimal, really are minimal at this point. A 300 megahertz processor, I'm not even sure you can find 300 megahertz processors anymore. <laughs> you would have to find a very old computer to find a 300 megahertz processor. Uh, and then 384 megs of RAM, uh, same uh, 1.5 or 2.5 gigs for storage space. So again, this is one thing to be thinking about when you're going to be creating machines, what do you plan uh, to use the machine for? Think about what the resource requirements are and then spec out whatever system or think about what you will be uh, be creating the virtual machine. Uh, so with that, let's go back over. Uh, we're gonna get out of that. We're going to go back. I'm um, gonna have to just do ubuntu.com again. So we go back to Ubuntu, we go to download. Okay, again, we're taking a look at this. So we're gonna be doing server. If you go down, uh, you're gonna see two versions of the server that you can download. You're gonna see right, right now, uh, it's 18.04 LTS, and then you'll see 19.04. The green LTS, whenever you see the LTS, what LTS stands for is long-term support. What this means is basically Basically, this means this is Ubuntu's official or Conical's official version of Ubuntu server, and they will be supporting it uh, for five years. So basically, you know that this version will be supported for a significant amount of time. 1904, what these are, is these are kind of like the, the, the bleeding edge, the cutting edge versions. They throw a couple of things in there. They do some tests. They do some experiments. Some things work out well. Some things don't work out so well. And so especially when you're learning Learning, I would argue just always stay with the LTS. Generally, unless, you, unless you're doing experiments or unless there's a very specific product or service uh, that the newer version gives you that the LTS doesn't give you, I would argue generally just use LTS. Uh, past that, then you just click on the LTS link um, and then it should automatically start downloading. There you go, you see it starts downloading and you can see it comes out to be 884 megs. Uh, I will cancel that there because I have already downloaded it. So from there, what we're going to do is we're going to go to a virtual box. So you will open up a virtual box um, and this is what you're looking at. Uh, from here, we're going to need to create a new a virtual machine so that we can install the operating system onto it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here and we're gonna click on this weird blue starry type button. Uh, this allows us to create a new virtual machine. Uh, then it's going to ask us what it what is the name? And so when we say the name, basically over in this left-hand side, you're gonna have a whole bunch of servers or virtual machines. And so this is that name. This, To be clear, this is not the host name for the server. This is not the server's name. This is the friendly name to you so you know what the hell the server is. Uh, so for us, Ubuntu install demo. So I'll just call it Ubuntu install demo. So then when it's over on the left-hand side, and I'll, oh, that's that's the, the virtual machine I created for when I was installing Ubuntu. Uh, then you get the options for what type. Uh, so we will do Linux, and Linux now is 64-bit. So we'll leave it at 64-bit. The machine folder where this thing's gonna get dumped, we'll leave it there as default, and we'll continue. And the question is, is how much RAM? Now, that's why we need to look at those uh, those requirements, right? So we we're looking at, what, 500 or so megs of RAM in order to, for the minimum requirements to make the server work. And so we're sitting here and we see 1,024 as the default, and that's fine for us. I'll just leave it at 1,024. It is important though, remember, Ubuntu desktop, when we go to install the desktop, I'll show you this, Ubuntu desktop requires two gigs of RAM. So if you don't look at the system requirements and you simply go through this and leave the defaults, uh, sometimes it'll work out for you. <laughs> and sometimes it'll be horrible. So just do remember to look at the system requirements and make sure when you're plugging in these numbers that they meet the system requirements. Then we're gonna hit continue. Uh, then do we want to uh, create a new virtual hard disk now? Yes, we wanna create a new virtual hard disk now. We're going to create it. What type, uh, what disk file type? We will just simply leave it as VDI. Uh, then we will continue. Do we want it to be dynamically allocated or fixed? So what this means is we will give it a max size that it can grow to, but it will only grow. So the, the size of the file, basically the size of that VDI file will only grow as, as is required um, as the server 
takes up more and more space. So if you put fixed, so basically if I put fixed size and I set it to 10 gigs, then it will automatically be 10 gigs in size. If I say dynamically allocated, I can say it can grow to 10 gigs in size, but when it initially is installed, maybe it uses 2.5, then it uses three, then it uses five, then it uses six, it'll, it'll grow. So we'll leave the dynamically allocated, and that's what I would suggest for, for most things. Um, then it's gonna ask how, how much space do we want? And for, I think, 10 gigs, again, the max uh, that was required for the minimum was 2.5, but especially since we have this dynamic growth, we might as well just give it 10 gigs, make life easy for ourselves. And then we're going to click the create. And yay, so there we go. We got the uh, Ubuntu install demo. Now that's that's not all we have to do. Uh, we have to actually connect the ISO uh, file to this virtual machine so that we can boot off of it and install Ubuntu. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we make sure that this is highlighted, right? So you simply single click in order to highlight which virtual machine you wanna be dealing with. We want to deal with Ubuntu install demo. So then we're going to go up and click on settings. One of the first things you should just make sure is you go over to network. And again, if you're going to be doing networking with your virtual machine, make sure that the, the attached to is set to what you want it to. Um, I would say right now, just leave it to the default of NAT. If you don't know what these different settings are, just make sure it's just at NAT and leave it there. And then we are going to go over to storage. So storage is where we actually connect the ISO file. And this is really weird. <laughs> this is just piss poor user, user experience. It really is. So basically in order to connect the ISO that we will boot off of, uh, in order to be able to install the operating system, you have to come to storage. Then you click on empty. Then you go all the way over to this weird little circular thing over here. And then you click on this. And then you do choose virtual optical, optical disk file. So I can click on that. And so I've already downloaded the ISO file. So you have to make sure, again, if you're gonna be installing an operating system, it needs to be an ISO file. So if you downloaded a file that was zipped or tar tarballed, something like that, make sure you, you uncompress it, decompress it to get your ISO file. You need the ISO file. And so what we need here is the Ubuntu 18.04.3 live server, AMD. We simply click on that. We do open. And now that's connected. So see here, we have the Ubuntu live server, so on and so forth. We see the 848 megs in size, and there we go. So that's the main thing that we need to do to be able to connect that ISO file. And then we're going to simply connect, uh, do OK. And then from there, all we're going to do is we just double click. So we double click on our virtual machine, and it starts booting up. Uh. So there we go, we can get rid of these little, those things up there. We see it's starting to, to copy files, that type of thing, um, into the, uh, the virtual hard drive that we've created. So here is a standard, you know, choose your language. So um, you can, you can use the arrow keys to go up and down. English is my language, so from here, I just simply hit enter. Uh, then layout, variant of the keyboard, nothing to modify there, so I do done. Then it asks about your network connections. Uh, I would argue if, if you see stuff here and it all works, uh, you should just leave it. <laughs> just leave it unless you know what you're doing. Uh, just so hit done. Uh, then a proxy address. So if you have some kind of proxy address for some reason, you can plug that in there. We don't, so done. A mirror address for uh, for Ubuntu for for downloading things, installing updates, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we don't we don't need to modify that. So we just hit enter. Uh, then it asks, um, so since we're using a virtual machine, you know, we're just going to use the entire virtual disk. Um, it is something to be thinking about when you're installing Ubuntu onto a physical uh, computer. You can think about, do you want to use the entire hard disk? Do you want to use an entire hard disk and set up something called uh, LVM? We'll deal with LVM later. Do you want to configure things manually? For right now, uh, all you're going to do is you're going to hit enter. And it says choose a hard disk to install. We've only got one, so we just hit enter. Uh, gives us all this information. Uh, yep, it looks good. We hit done. And then from here it says, are you sure you want to continue? So, so it, it defaults to no. 
You hit the arrow key to continue, make sure it's red, and then hit enter. <clears throat> and now it's going to ask for your name, your host name. So this is where you plug in the server name or the host name, the username, so on and so forth. So I'm just gonna say my name is Bob. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to say your server's name uh, is, I don't know, we're just gonna call it server. Uh, pick a username. So I'm, I'm using tab in order to move between these fields. I'm using tab. Uh, pick a username. I will do Bob. Tab. Uh, choose a password. One, two, three, four, five, six. Tab. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, tab. And now we're done. So uh, my name is Bob. Your server's name is server. The username is just Bob. That's just it. Password is one, two, three, four, five, six. That's all confirmed. Uh, then I will click done. Uh, this is do what do you want to install open SSH server uh, so this is how you you connect uh, to a server basically um, using SSH that's a big way that you connect to to Linux servers for right now we're for by default we're just gonna not install that we won't deal with that right now so if I wanted to install it I simply hit the space bar to do the X uh, I will unexit and then I hit tab to do done then these are these are snaps so these are additional things you can add to your server environment uh, kubernetes docker containers live patch clients powershell all kinds of interesting things uh, basically this is the type of thing where if 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 you know what any of these words are <laughs> if you know what any of these things mean by all means hit the space bar to install it if you don't know what any of these words mean hit tab to go done and just leave it as it is and we're gonna hit done and so now it's going through and it's actually doing the install process and installing uh, Ubuntu server onto our virtual machine. So I went through all of that. Um, don't really care about the full log. Again, you can hit the arrow key to go up to view full log if you really want to. We're just gonna leave it at reboot and then we will hit return, enter. And so as we can see, it's going through and it is now actually starting up the server operating system. Um, please remove the installation medium and press enter. So I did that. So it's going through, starting everything up. Okay, so once it start, once it finishes, does all the OKs, then all you have to do is you just press return. So when it stops doing anything, you just press return, and then it'll ask you for the server login. All, all I'm gonna do is then is type in Bob. Then it's gonna ask for a password, one, two, three, four, five, six. And yay, we're logged in. There we go, that's your blinking cursor. That's your blink. <laughs> this is what noobs do, they're always like, yay! I can't wait to install Linux and then, then they install Linux and then they're like oh look it's a blinking cursor so you change directory go back to root just to show you we've got the full file and folder structure uh, these are the the files and folders sitting in root uh, we can use ping in the sense uh, the network should be working so I can do something like ping cnn.com you go and we can see we're pinging cnn.com so we can see that this is a fully functional server right now and now we can go in and start playing and doing some cool stuff now one of the things to take a look at is what happened to the installation media so a problem with noobs a lot of times is you have the installation uh, cd or dvd you put that into the cd uh, rom onto your desktop or laptop computer you install the operating system then you forget to pull out the cd or dvd and then you install the operating system again and then again and again and again and again and so an important thing to be thinking about is making sure what happens to the installation 
Mission Media once the installation is done. So you don't simply boot into that installation process every time you reboot your, uh, your virtual machine. Uh, what's cool about VirtualBox uh, for that is if you go over, you take a look at storage, what you can see is that this is it has automatically cleared the ISO file that we had in there as the, the virtual, uh, the, uh, the installation media. So basically you go, you, you connect the ISO in order to install the operating system. And then once the installation process is over, uh, it will simply clear that ISO file out. So you don't have to worry about it anymore. So you don't have to go back and manually disconnect that ISO file. So that's one thing to think about. So with that, that's really what there is to, uh, to installing a Linux server into VirtualBox. Again, this is a full fledged Linux server. And from here we can go and we can start teaching you all the tasks that are required in order to man manage an Ubuntu server. So that's all there is to installing Ubuntu server into VirtualBox, right? So basically you download the ISO file, you make sure you know what the system requirements uh, for the operating system are, you create a virtual machine that has more than those requirements, uh, then you connect uh, the ISO file in storage and away you go. There's really just not a whole hell of a lot to it. But what I can tell you, again, why a lot of, well, why a lot of people give up. People don't fail, but why a lot of people People give up is they go through all this process they feel really cool they feel really excited and then literally they're sitting there looking at a blinking cursor and that's what you got right that's that's the command line that's bash is a blinking cursor so if you know the commands to type in you can do some really cool fancy things if you're not really sure what to do yeah, the blinking cursor can't can't help you I think that's one of the reasons why people get very oh, very worried, they get very concerned about the command line world, is that it's, you, you can't really intuit how to do things unless you know other command line operating systems. Like if you know Unix, maybe you can, you can do Linux. But when you're dealing with the GUI world, when you're dealing with the graphical user environment world, you can right click, you can left click, you can double click things, right? You can sit there and you can, you can figure out what to do. It may take you a little while, but you should. You can probably figure out how to get something accomplished. Uh, in the command line world, you don't got right clicks. You don't got left clicks. You got commands, you got arguments, you got file names, you've got directories. If you know what to type in and how to type it in, you can do some cool things. If you don't know what to type in, um, you just got a blinking cursor. So just realize that when you get into the command line world, the command line is a lot about just, just pure memorization, pure memorization. Because that's the thing, a lot of people nowadays in this modern computer world, right? They they really, they go off their hunches. They, 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 they think, oh, I'll just figure out how to do X, Y, or Z, right? They're used to using smart TVs. They're used to using tablets. They're used to using smartphones. They're used to using Windows or Mac. And they go, ah, how, how hard can Linux be? I figured out how to use a Mac in a day. Well, if you're using the command line, command line's not a Mac. <laughs> so we're going to go into it. We're going to do many classes on basically how to, how to be able to configure and do things with the command line. Just realize when you're sitting there looking at that, that blinking little cursor, it's not just, it's not just you. Everybody just has that one moment, uh, after they install their first, uh, their, their first Linux, uh, server where they go, Oh crap. What the hell did I get myself into? Uh, so with that, as always, I enjoyed doing this video and I look forward to seeing you at the next one.